اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم التوك بتاعتي النهارده هتكون على الفيلد اوف فيجن فيرست ام جونا ستارت باي سمول انتروداكشن وي اول نو ذات اف وي كفر وان اي اند فيكس وان بوينت ذا فيلد اوف ذا فيلد اوف فيجن ويل اكستند تو ذا تيمبرال سايد 100 ديجريز تو ذا نيزل 60 اب 60 اند داون 75 اون ذا افريج ات ديبندز على The prominent, the eye is prominent or not, the bony configuration round. It may vary from one person to another. So, if this is the point of fixation, it extends temporarily 100 degrees, nearly 60, up 60, and down 70. Inside this area, everything is visible. Outside it, it's not visible. We can examine the field of vision by two methods: either kinetic. Perimetry or static perimetry. In kinetic perimetry, we get a target from the peripheral outside the seeing area and we move toward the center. And we ask the patient when he sees this target, the location he notices this target. This is in kinetic perimetry. On the other hand, in static perimetry, we get a fixed location. And we present to this location a stimulus of different intensity, bright light, less bright light, and less and less, and ask the patient where, when he can see it, and if he doesn't see it. So we determine the level at which the sensitivity of this location is. So this is the difference between kinetic and static perimetry. So in static perimetry, we, we know exactly the sensitivity of a certain location. While in kinetic perimetry, we get a moving target and ask the patient the location when he see this target. So here, this is a kinetic perimetry. We get a variable location, asking the patient where he see it. While in kinetic, we get a fixed location and we change the sensitivity. Kinetic perimetry is more efficient, more flexible in evaluating any part in the field, especially a peripheral field. It's more important in neurology and in pediatric conditions, but not in glaucoma. So in kinetic perimetry, we present target from the periphery in one meridia, asking the patient, when do he, does he see it? Then we go for another meridia, another meridia, and so on. Then we draw a line joining these points. We say this is the limits of the field of vision for this target, or what is known as isopter or a contour line. Isopter or a contour line is the limit of the field. It varies depending on the size of the target we are using and the color of the target we are using for this test. For example, here, this is the same person. If you put him in the param on a parameter, and we start to make a drawing of the field using test object size five millimeters and its color white, then we get this at the limit of the field of vision. If the same person was tested again with another test object, the size, instead of being five, it's now two millimeters, and we draw the field. This is the limit of the field. Again, if we change the stimulus to half millimeter size, and we draw the field, and this will be the limit of the field. So the contour line, or the isopter, it varies depending on the size of the test target we are using. It's written here, say, half millimeter white, this is the color, and 330 millimeter, this is the distance between the patient's eye and the perimeter itself. So we say this is the isopter. So this is the limit of the field when we were using five, using two, using half. This is a physiological phenomenon. The importance of this, if we are following a patient, we should use the same isopter for follow-up. Otherwise, you cannot compare different examinations. This variation depends on the anatomy. 
In the periphery of the retina, we get a receptor, a group of receptors, reaching one bipolar cell, another group to another one bipolar cell, and a third group to one bipolar, then a group of bipolar, say three, to reach one ganglion cell. If we go a little bit toward the center, we get smaller collection of receptors to one bipolar, another small collection to one bipolar, and say two bipolars, for example, to one ganglion. If you go to the fovea, you get one receptor to one bipolar to one ganglion cell. In nerves, we know what's known as all or none rule. If you get a stimulus of this size, stimulating, say, seven, eight receptors. If you put it in the periphery, it will only stimulate seven, eight receptors, but it will not stimulate the whole group. So I wouldn't reach the target to fire an impulse in the nerve, in the ganglion cell. So the patient will not see it. If we go more central, the size of this stimulus is large enough to stimulate all these cones. So we reach the threshold to fire an impulse, then the patient will see it. If you get a very small stimulus, it will not be seen unless you go to the very central part. This is just because of the arrangement of the receptors, bipolar cells, and the ganglion cells. Clinically, in the past, we used to check the central part of the field using the germ screen. Germ screen is a screen meter by meter. In this case, the patient will sit in front of it at a distance of one meter, or two meters by two meters, and the distance from the patient will be two meters. We get a point of fixation in the center, and we get different meridia. We get rings here. The central ring is five degrees from point of fixation, then 10 degrees from point of fixation, 20 degrees, and 30 degrees from point of fixation. The doctor, we get target, different colors, different sizes, and start to move the target from the periphery to the center. Of course, one eye is covered, and the patient is asking, does he see this target all the time? Then the test is repeated in the different meridia. Imagine that our patient miss seeing the target from this location to the next one, but sees later. He can see it from the periphery here, but he miss it in this sector, then see it again, and so on. Then we will say that the patient got a defect in this area. A defect inside the field, we call it scotoma. So scotoma is an island of blindness inside the field of vision. Clinically, we say scotoma can be relative or absolute, or can be positive or negative. Absolute scotoma means that this area is defective for all sizes and all colors. Whenever we change the size or the color of the target, this, the same area is blind. While relative scotoma, it's an area that is blind to certain size or certain color. We call this a relative scotoma. Say in optic neuritis, you get a relative center scotoma for the red. In papilledemia, you get a relative center scotoma for the blue. Positive or negative? Positive means that the patient is aware that there is a defect in, in his field of vision, like he gets a corneal opacity or a cataract. He knows that there is a defect in front. But negative scotoma means that the defect is there and the patient is not aware of. Static perimetry gets several advantages. It's a repeatable. It can detect shallow scotomas. It get numbers, so we can use these numbers for statistical analysis. The disadvantage, they are inflexible. You always examine the same locations. Potentially a longer duration of test time, but now we get a rapid way to conduct the test in a quicker way. This is just a small video. The operator choose whatever program he needs. This is an old parameter. New generations get different display.
Here, this is the printer where uh, at the end of the test, you can print out the results. The patient will put his chin, his chin here, and over this hole, there is a small camera that keep tracking the view of the patient's cornea. We ask the patient to fix in the middle of these four points. This is the location of the fovea. Then, as you can see, w when the test is conducted, you will see tiny spots. First, we ask the patient to look in the center here. But after that, we get stimulus of light, as it's shown here, coming from different locations. The duration of the stimulus is quite short, and the intensity of the stimulus varies from one time to another time to check the sensitivity of the retina in these different locations. In static perimetry, usually we use a special size on the average number three, but in advanced glaucoma, we need to change the size to a larger size. We get a central field and the peripheral field. The central field is the central 26 or 25, or in some sources, it's the central 30 degrees, and the rest is the peripheral field. The central part is very sensitive. Whenever we reduce the size or change the color, this area will see it. But in the periphery, if you get a small target or if you get different colors, it will be missed. So the central area or the central field is the central 25 or 30 degrees. The importance of this area is this small central area represented in the occipital cortex around 83%. So most of the receptors in the cortex is coming, receiving stimuli from the central field. Almost all pathological lesions will appear in the central field.